Hello everyone and welcome back to Technically Unsure where I'm not really sure what I'm doing technically. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? So today in this video we are going to take a look at another portable pocket NAS. This one is also all SSD for SSDs that you can install on this and this one does not come with like a proprietary operating system from the vendor. It is just Intel N100 based NAS and you will be able to basically install whatever you want. I am going to install through NAS you will be able to install on RAID and anything else you want and we are going to take a look at it so before further ado here is what I'm talking about it is the AFRO all SSD NAS K100 and we are going to open it up and take a look at it and we are going to go over the specs and everything as you can see here on the specs page that they have over here it comes with an Intel N100 CPU and it comes with the Intel UHD graphics 12th gen 8 gigabyte RAM 4800 DDR5 to 4800 megahertz, four SSDs that you can install, and in terms of I/O, two USB 2 ports, one power supply Type C, two Type C USB 3.2 Gen 2, and RJ45 and HDMI. And RJ45 is actually 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. You can install CentOS, OilerOS, Ubuntu, Windows, FreeNAS, and TrueNAS, which TrueNAS is spelled wrong. Okay. So one of the things that I told them when I, they contacted me, as I said, that I have reviewed many similar NAS on this channel and what is the selling point of this and also price I asked for price so for price they said this is like 400 but they are gonna give 15% discount which I will put it in the description below so you can say $340 maybe with the discount on whatever but still I said like I've seen other NAS with this capability like what is the selling point and they said it doesn't come with proprietary OS you can install so it is not like a commercial NAS that from other vendors that we have reviewed in this channel so you are free to install whatever you want and they said it is very power efficient so we are going to take a look at that and uh, we'll see how it scales and levels up with the other ones so the power supply they provided comes with USB-C basically accepts 100 to 240 volts provides all sorts of voltages 3 amp so already it's not 5 amp so I think it's really not doesn't need a lot of power I guess and and they kindly sent a USB-C as well in the box. You know what? Let's use theirs. Why use mine? Yeah, I'm going to use whatever they sent. So first of all, how do you open this up for installing the NVMe SSDs? Oh yeah, the screws are underneath that. I wish it was better than this. I really don't want to do this every time I want to replace the SSDs. And I hope it's not a different way. And this is the way of doing it. So I'm just guessing because I don't see any other way of opening it and since there is a marking on it where the front is I'm assuming that's what anyone's supposed to do to install SSDs all right so I see the slots but I still have more screws to unscrew because of this heatsink thing on top of the slots for NVMe SSD so what I'm gonna just say right now as is you're not gonna be playing a lot with opening and closing and changing SSDs. You install it once and you use it. And then there is also NVMe SSD screws itself. So yeah, you have to unscrew a bunch of screws. Okay, so that comes right off. From what I see, they already installed an NVMe SSD and they only put one of these heatsink thermal pads, right? So I am not going to use theirs. Okay, so this should be like a 256. Yeah, 256. I'm not gonna use that. I have these bunch of two terabyte 980 and one that's also two terabyte, but it is XLR8. Doesn't matter. And they're all two terabytes, so total eight terabyte. Okay. All right, I guess that's how it is, but I need the thermal pads and everything to make it fit and actually use this heatsink. So first of all, let me see if I can take the whole thing out. Yeah, it comes out. Okay, so here it is. This looks like a laptop fan. Yeah, there's also a couple of heat pipes and everything. So yeah, I think this is like a repurposed laptop fan, I guess. If I Google that, we'll see. It's already installed and everything. There's thermal pads underneath. Okay, there are some power ICs in there so that's why all right I see the CPU underneath okay let me connect the cables and everything 
Okay, so I connected and you can see the power consumption over there once we start it. And there is the power button. The light comes on. Let's see if anything comes on the screen. I'm going to keep pressing delete. I guess it's the first boot. Okay, there you go. Finally. So it is iPro K100 as you can see. It's saying M.2 port 1, 2, 3 not installed, which is actually not correct. We'll see. And then it says that insert adapter auto power on. I guess it means that when you plug the USB-C, turn it on automatically or something. Intel N100, LPDDR5, Micron 8 gigabyte, 4800. Those are all correct. So it's 17 watt in BIOS. And absolutely, I can't hear anything at all. I wouldn't know that it is here and turned on. And I don't see any menu options, to, to be honest. There is no options. There is just the security. Okay, so the SSDs are here. How many? One, two, three. So one of them is not detected. All right, and Intel 2.5 gigabit Ethernet is there let me check i suspect one of the ssds are old let me replace that and try it again okay so we are booted into ubuntu and uh, i updated some stuff in there and installed some stuff when i'm not using it or doing anything with it it is idling at like six watts and now let's do a quick suspension that's not really doing much but let's try it goes up to 17 watts and it is still super quiet and we are getting 11,000 in Sysbench and for reference Raspberry Pi 5 you get 10,500 ish okay but stress ng is better test and do that quick all right so it's over and as you can see it is 20,000 and for reference with Raspberry Pi 5 in this matrix pro test in stress ng you get like a thousand okay so eight nine hundred thousand so that being said let's test the iperf 3 to make sure it's a 2.5 gigabit ethernet and absolutely is and the power consumption went up to 13 12 13 watts okay another thing that i want to test here is that bias thing i want to see if i can read it flash rom nope it's not okay so if you wanted to do bios stuff modding you need those uh, syc8 clips and uh, going after the chip and dumping it directly like that also let me try 4k youtube playback so it is absolutely playing it it's a 4k and it is not dropping a single frame and it's playing with eight seven eight nine watts okay so yes if you want to turn this into portable multimedia server i don't know five watts in the idle now the next logical thing for me to do is actually installing the TrueNAS and making sure also TrueNAS works and see the smb performance and all that stuff so let me take care of that real quick Okay, before I move forward, I just want to show you a very quick update. I installed TrueNAS Core, and as you can see when I do IF config, it does not detect the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. Not gonna deal with that. So moving to TrueNAS scale. I just wanted to show you as is, if you install TrueNAS Core, it's not gonna work. All right, so let me install the TrueNAS scale. Okay, so we are back. And as you can see, I just pressed the power button and installed TrueNAS scale and I'm booting into it. And you will see that it is starting and the power consumption is 13 watts. And once it boots, hopefully I will see the IP address and then we are gonna go into browser and continue to work from there. All right, so IP address is right there on the screen. Let's go to my computer and here you go. And in this, it's the username and password. There we go. So we are logged into TrueNAS scale, not the core. Core didn't work as is the driver for the ethernet did not work. And here's the 2.5 gigabit ethernet, eight gigabyte RAM and the four cores, okay? So everything is there in terms of storage. We don't have a pool. Let's create a, I don't know, test pool, no encryption. So. I don't have a proper disk. Let me see what I can do. Okay, so I created the pool, okay? And I used the three one terabyte NVMe SSDs, okay? And uh, let's create a data set, add a data set. That's also test, generic, test, save. Now let's create a Samba share. First of all, we have to start the service. Okay, first we need to create the user. Okay, let's configure, start the SMB and owner going to be the unsure and that's it. Okay, so we created a share. Now let's try that 168, 75, 62. 
Okay, so here we go. There is our share. And I'm going to try a large file copy over here and it should cap our 2.5 gigabit, which it does. Okay, so that's kind of pretty much it really. We got Turunas scale to work on this. Core did not work. 2.5 gigabit ethernet is working. Four NVMe slots and capping 2.5 gigabit ethernet, that's also working. So when it is uh, using as a Turunas scale server with, and you're using all disk and copy a 10 gigabyte file to it it's going to 8 watts so it is 8 9 10 watts i've seen 17 watts at the beginning and stuff like that but it is usually 8 see now it's 4 watts so it's 3 4 watts up to 8 9 10 watts when i'm doing benchmark it goes to 12 13 watts it's very very power efficient as they were claiming it is super quiet by the way absolutely no noise whatsoever i don't hear anything at all if i wouldn't be able to tell unless i look at the light here that it is turned on or off so yeah it looks like everything is working as expected and uh, TrueNAS scale is not really something developed by this company right as you know it's from ix systems if it works it works right so it is working so you will be able to get the virtualization and everything also set up on this create virtual machines all that it's not too much power because 8 gigabyte ram but it is what it is it is working and it's perfect so it's the power consumption as you can see it's now it's idle at four and if i copy and rename this and uh, if i rename this to 22 copy from server to my computer that's also goes up to 10 11 watts and now it's reading from all those disks and goes up to 11 watts so yeah and there you have it everything is working and you saw the suspense scores stress engine scores iperf scores and, and nas and true nas scale and everything that i could show you and seems like this is going to be 350 dollars to 400 dollars with coupon they are claiming it's going to be cheaper hopefully yeah i hope you enjoyed it it's very small and and in terms of dimensions let me actually measure it so it seems like it is oh by the way it's also very lightweight so it is 11 i would say yeah 11 centimeters by yeah it's a cube so 11 by 11 okay there you have it and the height is three and a half so something like three and a half 11 by 11 by four let's say three and a half so it's very lightweight very small very quiet and low power consumption as you can see okay uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, please let me know if you have any questions down below and uh, i will try to answer them as much as i can thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video bye for now